Yo, what it do, man? Welcome to Grind Face and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. I'm Sunny. We've been together for 28 years. Uh, married for 23, 22, somewhere around there. Who's counting, though? You say that every but, time. But um, this is episode three, episode three, and we're going to get on the topic of giving people access to yourself. So um, let's start that off, um, giving access, that access word. Um, some people might want to say you acting bougie when you get to switching up and like. But you're not switching up. True. So what are you doing? You're being yourself. So you being yourself and you just start separating yourself from people. Well, um, why would somebody do that? Well, not necessarily separate. Well, I guess hmm, I guess you can say that. But when I say giving people access to me, right. It could be somebody that you deal with on a regular basis, right? But let's say they come in with neg- negative energy. I'm not going to give you access to me in that moment. So it could be access to you, you know, over a period of time. It could be in a moment or it could be for a lifetime. Giving people access to you, you have to use discretion when and when not to. I, I agree. Like say somebody calling you with the BS and exactly. you answer the phone and you're going to sit exactly. on the phone with an hour listening to all this nonsense. It's like you're giving them access and now it's, they draining your energy in that moment, in that moment. OK, so it's not necessarily just cut you off. It's just like you you're not going to drain me. Right. Well, it's, it's, it's different context to it. Right. So let's say, for an example, when you have been around somebody. I think people are, some people are for a lifetime, and I know this sounds cliche, and some people are seasonal, but it's real. You know, I'm big on coming or looking at things from a psychological perspective, right? I've always believed this. Well, it wasn't until my mind was expanded when I started to believe this. If you're around the same people all the time, talking about the same stuff all the time, doing the same stuff no growth. all the time, what are you learning? And so sometimes you do have to separate to be around other people, different experiences, different lifestyles. You know, I always tell my clients this. You never know what dysfunction is. You don't even know that you're dysfunctional until you're around healthy people. And in order for me to understand that I'm operating in dysfunction, I have to get out of that dysfunctional place to be around different people. That's the same thing with access. You know, given this. Yeah, but then when you start doing that, the people you start moving away from, they're going to be like, oh, you acting bougie. She, she no, 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 they no. They not going to understand that you're separating to better yourself because they stuck in that dark spot. Check this so out. So down they want to attack you like, oh, forget whoop de whoop because they still stuck in that dark spot. And now they seen you hanging out with these new friends and stuff like that. And I'm like, they're going to feel some type of way. So let's, let's, let's be clear. Going back to this cliche statement that I said, some people are for a season and some people are for a lifetime. Now, everybody has the room or the ability or the decision to grow. Now, whether, whether or not you want to grow with me is your choice, right? And so if you want to continue the access, we have to grow together. But if I'm growing and you're staying stuck, then we can no longer be in the same community. So you shouldn't get mad when someone starts hanging out with other people or venturing off to new experiences. That's not saying there is something wrong with you. Or maybe they're just basically they well, need some to. Some people don't want to change. I agree. You cut me off just to say that? Yeah. <laughs> You made me lose my train I know, of you, thought. You always do that. You go on your rant and you just. My rant? Your rant and you just go on. How is it a rant? Because at the point is you milking it. You milking it. So let's get to the point <laughs> like, because I've seen people like they want to they want to reconnect to old high school buddies and stuff like that, but not on the same page. Now, how is that like bad for you? Like connecting and doing things with people. That's not on your level, but you're trying to keep that old because y'all was cool back in the day. But you're trying to just keep that bond that you had when you was younger, but not understanding that you change being an adult. I don't like the the term on my level because I don't think there's levels. I don't think I'm above or beneath anyone. But I, I will say commonalities. You know what I mean? Do we have things in common or not? Okay. Yeah. So the levels thing I don't like because it puts big eyes and little use. But let's let's say like um you know because I cut people off because they're not on my 
I ain't gonna say level, but yes, they, they they doing things doing things that I, I won't do. You know what I'm saying? And it also could be dangerous. So you get to a certain level in your life and you start moving. I know a story. Somebody was he reconnected with somebody. They went to the liquor store to do rob the store, and his whole life got changed because he was in the wrong situation with somebody on a whole different mindset of him, and got put in the situation because it was an old buddy. You know what I'm saying? But this is the thing, too. Like, even reconnecting with people from the past, I think you should do a temperature check. And when I say a temperature check, I feel like you should basically be trying to see what type of person this is before you even give them access. Could, could be the devil. Could you, you be. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get into get in. Could be. So you, you, you basically need to know who you're dealing with at all times. You know, because... Uh, one situation, just like you said, can have someone in a, a different situation. I could say for me personally, um, before I would appease things and people and conversations on the sake of my love for them. But now, you know, I was just on the phone with somebody on my way home. But, hey, I want to listen to my music. I don't feel like talking. You know, is that a bad thing? No, I want to be in my own zone and my own vibe. And before I would appease conversations and things when in reality – Sometimes there is no commonality and I, I'm big on time. I, I'll stress that, you know, what I do with my time matters. And so just knowing who you have around you and who you want to give access to you. So most people will say, oh, they're changing. They think they're better. They're different. It's like, no, I want to grow. And I want to be around people that are going to help me grow or that want to grow with me. Yeah, because I'm on that point of my age, my time, my age. My time is very important. I don't want to go somewhere and be bored. And you're worse could, than me. I could stay at home. You know what I'm saying? So if if it's something I don't want to do, it's nothing against you. It's just I don't want to do that, and I'm not going to give my time to it. I'd rather be sitting at home on my couch watching TV than sitting at the club and watching people, you know what I'm saying, do stuff that I don't do. And what is that? Dance? dance doing all the extra <laughs> extra shit but i'm saying i enjoy i enjoy my peace with myself is no problem and you know saying people get offended if you don't show up to their events not understanding that's not fun for you oh yeah so that's that's i'm glad you said that um support is in many ways right and so if the environment is not conducive to my well-being i won't be in it and with everything that's going on in the world today i think you have to be very conscious and in particular with where you put your time and energy into and the places that you're in. And a lot of people don't understand. It's like, hey, if you cool with being in that setting, that's you. But I'm not. You know, I love my life. You know, and then honestly, when I'm invited to things, obviously, because we go in pairs, we never usually go in one. I'm not going to have you in a setting or in a situation just to hang out with somebody because they want to be in that situation. And you really just just didn't really want to be there. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no fun. And that's what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm not, I'm just going just to show face. It's not worth it to me. Sometimes you, you know do got to go and show face though. No, I don't. You probably do, but I, I don't. <laughs> like, like I said, I, I'm not going to show go, face. You, I'm not going to say you know a particular saying? situation, but because the person you loved and the, the, the connection, you just, we went to a situation, very boring. But you have to show face for support. So sometimes you will do, you will be in situations, not that we were at, at risk or it was anything that was detrimental to us or anything like that. But I can tell you didn't want to be there. I didn't really want to be there, but we showed up for support. True. Oh. oh. I, don't, I don't remember, but I'm just going to agree. True. Okay. No, because I, I would have to go into the details and say, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. So basically, access and, um, Sometimes you you when you're in the dark, you don't understand that you're in the dark. And oh, people like don't for example, that. for example, I remember when we were younger, right, and we would be in the hood, stay, and we thought it was normal. Like uh-huh. I, I, I was with it, you know. Somebody come, it, it was not an issue for me at all. And now being in settings like I'm hyper vigilant, I'm watching everybody's move, and I don't even like to be in those type of settings because I don't want to have to be hyper vigilant and looking at everything and watching every movement. And that's the dark place when you are in those settings and you don't it's see, normal. you it's don't see you. the 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 risks 
No, you know, you see it because you part of the damn wrist yourself. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a part of the wrist. You know what I'm saying? So, but you in the dark but space, I wasn't you're the scared danger. Of the you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's normal to you, and you once you I don't know. I guess once you get out there and you see what's different and what's out there, you can see like, damn, that was really a dark place, and you can just see the evil spirits moving around everywhere. Let me ask you this: everywhere. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and they told you the story like over ten times? Um, no. No. Yeah. I kind of cut it off. I don't hear repeat stories. <laughs> you, knowing you, you would cut the person off. But to me, that's even an example. When somebody keeps like, dang, you done told the story. Yeah, I tell them, times, like, okay, nigga, we heard that. Times. What you do about it? Ten, no, no, not even where it's, uh, it needs to be a solution. I'm just saying when a person regurgitates the same stories over and over and over, I would have to think that you're not growing, elevating, or have anything going on no with your experience. life. Yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. And so when I come across that, because I have, it's like we're talking about the same stuff. And so I don't want to keep having the same conversations because obviously you regurgitate in the same experiences and stories. These are other reasons why people separate. Because if I'm listening to the same stories every day, what am I getting from this? Nothing. Exactly. But you can master that story. <laughs> <laughs> you can finish that story. No, nah, it's it's not really. It's, it's life, their life story. But I'm like, that's just like somebody every time you have a conversation with them, they keep talking about back when they were in high school. It's like, okay, psychologically, have you not developed past high school? You know, mm -hmm. you're 40 years old. You're still talking about the things that happened in high school, at what point does your mind elevate to something greater? Yeah, some people just stuck, but let's, let's even go access with family members. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's like people feel like, cause they family, they just got the obligation, not the obligation, but just to fin help me out. Um, the obligation to basically have to deal with people because you, you, you saying it right. Well, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But uh, if they, they, if they bring you down, or bringing negativity to you, I believe you got the right to cut it off. And but the crazy access. thing is many times people don't even understand. Okay. Okay. Therapist hat. So many times when people are negative and dysfunctional, again, they don't even know that they operate in a mindset of dysfunction because they don't, they've never seen healthy, right? So because they've never seen healthy, dysfunction is all they know so that's what's comfortable to them so when you say hey you're being negative hey i don't like what you're doing this behavior they're not the problem you're the problem and how do you tackle that because i've had that happen to me before and it's like they're mad at me because i'm like hey check this out i really don't want to hear this conversation because it's messy and it's negative but then they're mad at you because now they're they're feeling like you're basically looking at them in a negative light because you don't want to hear it. Yeah, um, that that really sucks energy from people. You don't deal with stuff like this, huh? Because no, I, I know I you, you I really cut it straight off. I cut it off. I got to go. I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? I ain't interested. If it ain't about positivity or making money or growing or I'll really cut it off. I don't know. I don't think people really no, going to okay, hold on, 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 hold on. I don't even think, okay, obviously you're a different man than you were m many years ago, right? But even when you weren't in that positive money, but it was say, it, it was you've never that, been that type say, of person. Yeah, stuff. you've yeah. never been that type of person. You call so, me by law. Oh, man, we about to go run. I need you to come. You know what I'm saying? Let Back me tell me you. Up. But let me tell you this. He say, she say shit. I will watch him and I'll be so, like, discouraged for the person on the phone. They'll get to going in the story. He'll just get completely quiet to the point. It's so uncomfortable. He's letting you know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, oh my God, I'll be embarrassed for the person. Cause literally he'll just, show, and, and then in the worst, what you do is you'll redirect the conversation on them. I'll be like, dang, what they thinking? Like he ain't going to say nothing. But, but that's why people don't call me with that. They don't. You know what I'm saying? And I'm very peaceful. I have peace. I remember you know when you used to get mad at me when I used to, um, you know, certain family members used to call you. And I would be hot on 10, like 
because you didn't see you didn't I don't know if you did understand because even when people called you with their negativity you brought that negativity I'm into just, the you, house you didn't let me finish this you know this what I'm saying because it's going deeper to spiritual because now you got that negative vibe which oh, now I'm it mad. brings down the household is like you feel the tension like damn just because she answered the phone and want to talk about some bs and now the whole house got the negative energy and you used to be so mad and be like I remember you walked in the room one day and was like, just hang up on them. And I'm like, no, nah, I, I, I ain't going to hang up. But I didn't, I didn't understand it then, but I do understand it now. Even giving access to a phone conversation can bring and change the dynamic in your household to the point where now is the negative energy is in your home. And so now it's just like I understand the concept of, hey, every conversation is not meant to be had, and every con – conversation is not even worth your time or energy. So when you talk about access, that's all a part of the access. I don't have to give you access to me. You not control. in this yeah. moment, not for a lifetime, not for a season. I love the moments. I'm, I'm very good with the moments. I've, I've conquered not l allowing you to give me access in the moment. Have you conquered it? Well, you've been conquered it. I, I lost, you lost me on the access for the moment. For like, the moment, like for example, a phone call. That's a moment. Like we oh, could be yeah. cool, we could be friends, answer. but in that moment, like well, you, based on honestly, what you're talking about, I'm not giving you access. Honestly, you know who's calling you with what? You know what I'm saying? People know, and you want to play like, oh, you know, That's you know, true. this person ain't never called you about nothing positive. So you know, when that <laughs> phone ring, you already know what it is. So it's like That's sometimes you just gonna go for the bait and answer it because it's like, well, that's true. Okay, so okay, let's be clear because. You know, I always say this. So your friends are handpicked, right? Your friends are people you have commonalities with. My friends never call me with negativity. When I get off the phone with my friends, our conversations be so deep, I leave the conversation fulfilled and thinking like they inspire me because the conversations is always a buildup to, you know, to to aspire to, to, to do and be more, right? So I'm not talking about my friends it's typically family because your friends, again, are handpicked, but your family, we deal with them based on the strength of love sometimes. We may not have anything in common with our family members, but because they're our family members, we'll deal with them anyways. And that's typically who makes these phone calls or who wants these moments of access that are draining and negative and causes these issues. Yes. They are. So let me ask you this. Was that frustrating for you when I wasn't getting the point when you kept telling me that? Oh, yes. Because if it's like, it, it's like, it got me an attitude because now I'm I'm irritated. You know what I'm saying? Even but you're not even in the conversation. My though. point, but it's the energy. And that's the part you, well, people don't understand. What energy like, was I getting? It's the off. energy of negativity. It's more, it's deeper than, you know what I'm saying? People will think it's like, let, let's say, let's say, um, cause you know, back in the day when we was in the, all the, um, extra activities, you could sense the tension in the air when something's about to pop, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I was, well, what was about the pop? You know when you a fight about to break I'm out, about or, in the or, house. but you know what I'm saying. You when you in an argument on the negative energy or whatever, the gossip or the yanking, whatever, it's a spirit of negativity, which comes into the household, even though you th you communicating through the phone and whatever. But now that spirit is attaching to you, which now is drilling in your household. Now people around you can sense the the energy of like. You know what I'm saying? I, I, it's hard to explain because I'm not all that spiritual. But I, you know I what guess saying? I guess but, it's different for me, I, and I guess is I don't know. I guess it's different for me. It's like if I well, you weren't you on know the phone. When I no, have no, issues, no, 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 no. Be like, you know, like you know, when I had an attitude, you you could sense the the energy. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's I like don't that. let. Okay, let's say for example, you get mad at somebody on the phone. I you mad. As long as you're not mad and take it out on me, because I don't do that. I don't take my frustrations out on my household. Y'all may see or feel like, oh, yeah, she that that conversation made her upset. But what you I'm saying, saying you is, don't take it out on a household. But when you have an attitude off something else that somebody but brought I never to have you, an attitude with you, you don't have an attitude, but you in a different mood. You you in a whole different area in, in different environment in your head. You you somewhere else. 
So it, that affects the household because you answered the phone. So this person that you answered the phone with done dictate your household because now you're okay. in a whole Got different it. mood. You know what I'm True. saying? True. But I want to ask you this because now I, you know, I came up with another thought. So does a person not, this is like a, a, a side conversation. So does a person not have the right to be angry? You got the right to be, everybody got the right to be angry. So let's say, for example, I was just angry at something random and I'm angry and I'm expressing, am I not okay to do that? Yes, you okay to do that, but shit, keep it to a limit. You know what I'm saying? Well, what's like, the limit? Like if you, you, you got the, um, it's like, it's like bringing work home. Let me you know tell you saying? something about like, him. So if he, I could be frustrated. He's going to give me five minutes. And yeah, I said, which is annoying to me, <laughs> it's annoying to me. I mean, I'm exaggerating with five minutes, but my thing is when something really bothers she me, wanna go over it, I have over to process it, it. Over it, it I have it, to, but it's not days. It's not days. It may be a, 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 about an hour or two. I try for, to be the supportive husband and listen to it for like the first two times. But when it get on 10 times, it's like, okay, look, get, the, get over this shit. Like, so and that's what I mean. It comes into the household. That's what I'm saying. Because you're trying to process it, but yet it's affecting that we ain't had shit to do with it. Why we gotta process it and move on? No, no. I have to process it. I have to think through it. I have to find strategies, and then I let it go. But you, it's not a whole day. Because if I get that mad, I'll take a nap and go to sleep for the day and wake up, and I'm fine. And that's what I mean. It affects your household. Because I took a nap? Because you processing shit and it don't have <laughs> shit to do with me. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You bring it outside shit but and hold it on. affects the household. Hold on. But so. Because now you, you want to process, take naps and shit. It's like in the middle of the day. What you taking and a nap Okay, for? so that goes back to me asking psychologically, is a person, is it not okay for them to be angry? Because if that's how I process and that's my process. I'm not smashing nobody's windows out. I'm not putting my hands on anybody. I'm not cursing anybody out. I'm not being mad at you. I'm not being mad at my kids. That's my process to deal with anger. So what you're saying is because I'm angry, it's affecting the household. But there's times you're angry, and I let you it's, be angry. It's time, but I'm saying, like, say we out somewhere. I might get pissed off. I might process it for five minutes, but I'm not going to let it affect the day. I'm going to continue the day and then probably finish it up later. Oh, you know no. Let one of your pages get taken down. What are we, we talking uh, about? No, because, a, nah, if one of your pages get taken down, you're going to be hot. And then if I say something, what? Like, Okay, he's in one of those moods. His, his, and sometimes I don't even know your page got taken down. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's because that's when you really get mad when it's something. But I'm not like, oh, yeah, it's affecting the household. No, dude, go do your thing. You know, go be angry. Well, we, do we, go we, through it. And then basically do your process. We're talking about now you switch to business. We ain't I'm talking, just we, no. we're talking about access and no, people. No, because I'm just saying like Because now you're just trying to get one in. No. <laughs> That's all you, we're no, talking about I'm access and saying, people, not business. No, okay, but that was just an example that I gave. But what I'm saying is even with access and how you process, because we went into the whole when people you saying is coming into your household, which I agree. But if my process of anger is not detrimental yeah, okay, she not talking for an hour or two. You know, life is not over. That's my process. So you can't be like, oh, just get, no, I need to process it. And I don't think, so I'm I'm going off of what you're saying. I don't think every time a person gets angry off of a conversation. Now, I feel like if you know this person is calling you with negativity and you engage, that's different because you already are aware that this is what this person is calling for. But if I get baited into a conversation unknowingly that this is going to happen and I'm angry, I have the right to work through that process. Okay. <laughs> you do. <laughs> I'm just saying I have the right, just like I allow you to write. Be, and, and it's funny how p different people deal with different stuff because when you get angry, it don't, it don't. The only time it affects me when you're angry is when somebody does something to you. Then I'm like protective mode. You know what I mean? But just when you're just angry, okay, he 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 upset. As long as you're not angry but at I'm me. I'm quiet when I'm angry. 
Yeah, but I'm that not. that doesn't affect me. It only affects me is when is when you're angry at me, because I understand psychologically you have to process that, right? Anger is a, a normal emotion, and you have to figure out a way. As long as again you're not smashing out the windows and running around the house screaming and hollering, and you're not making the household chaotic, I have to allow you to process your anger in what a healthy way that's conducive to you. So how long do a person allow a person that this access? When do they, how, how do they cut this negativity off? With family members? With anybody. Like, I, well, I don't think you should ever cut a person off without having a conversation with them. And this is what I mean. So you're giving them an option to change. Yeah, because I believe, okay, let's say something is bothering me about, let's say a person, they always call me the B word, right? I hate when women do that. That's just like, do not call me that, right? But if I never say anything and they keep calling me that, I'm basically giving them the indication that what they're doing is okay. And so for me to all of a sudden just cut them off, I think I'm wrong, not them, because I never told them my expectation or my boundary in that relationship. And so if a person is doing something that you don't like, you need to address it. Hey, I don't like you calling me the B word. I'm giving you the opportunity to correct it. Now, once I've given you the opportunity to correct it and you keep doing it, then I cut you off because I gave you the opportunity to change the behavior and you decided not to. So basically, if you can't respect the boundaries, it's time to go. It's, oh, it's, what? If you don't, it's, if you don't respect someone's boundaries, then it's 100% time to go, right? Because if you don't respect my boundaries, ultimately you don't respect me. But a person that doesn't respect other people's boundaries is because they don't have boundaries for themselves. Okay, that's, that's a seems, whole other topic, that's though. That's a coin right there. You a gotta, coin, a uh, coin, I got boundaries. a coin. Eh. But what about, um, let's talk about access. Um, marry, you married, but having given your single friends access to you. How would that affect you got to elaborate on that because that could you know mean something what do you mean giving your friends you your know it's like friends. you marry your single friends keep wanting to call you up and, and, and come out to the club with them and do that single stuff with them you know what's what single stuff that whole shit you know what i'm saying well i can't relate because i don't have friends that are hoes so well, I'm, I'm just saying how would a person you know what i'm saying is that is that good good boundaries or you feel does it feel like this person don't have respect for your marriage for trying to get you to go out and do stupid shit like that i feel like you don't have respect for your marriage because can't no one should there should never be a time where a person can get you to do something that you don't that you don't subscribe to so is it that they but don't it's the same you just said sometimes they bait you in and you don't realize the, nah, the shit you step in you just nah. said that with the phone call it's like oh somebody bait me in and no, pissed me off no what i'm but, saying is okay for example Somebody call you because we were talking about you kind of know when a person, certain people call you what they calling for. Right. But let's say if I answer the phone and I have no idea that this person is going to call with this or that I may not ever known that they were a negative person. I'm baited without knowing I'm being baited. Right. But if you're going somewhere with a person, it's not like you hopping in the car and then just figure out where you're going once you reach the destination, because that would be irresponsible on you to not get the details before even getting in the car. So there's never a time where you're baited into a situation. If you're being reached, I'm not getting in somebody's car and you're not telling me where we're going. Like as a grown woman, if I need to know where we're going, what's happening before. I, so it's not really on your friend. Again, it's on you. What are you subscribing to? Like, what are you agreeing to? Okay, okay. That's an adult decision. It's like, can't nobody bait you into doing a situation in a situation that you don't want to be in? That don't even make sense. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. I ain't got <laughs> shit to say. <laughs> uh, you didn't know you about it uh, because it's like, if you think about it, if, if you have a, a friend that is single, which I do, certain things they're not going to ask me because they respect the boundaries. It's not just the fact that they respect the boundaries. They know me. Right. And so they know what I am and what I'm not going to do. And so, again, it's not on your friend. It's on you to basically make so it. Fellas, y'all hear that? Their single friends know them. So when they going out doing whole activities, because they know them. OK, <laughs> you take you it. <laughs> All the way. Because a person know what a person do. So basically, if they if they invited you into in ratchet shit, they know how you get down. That's not you know necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. So let me back up. 
I'm saying my friends, right? Because I have a healthy group of friends. But let's look at it from a different perspective, unhealthy versus healthy. Remember, dysfunctional people don't know that they're operating in dysfunction. People that don't respect your boundaries, remember, they don't have boundaries of their own. So if your friend is inviting you to something and they're not respecting the fact that you're in a relationship or that you're married, sometimes it's not because they just they they think you do that is because they don't see what they're doing is wrong. That's two total different conversations. Okay, you got a point. Yeah, we you can't say my friends and it, it's it's a total different ball game, right? Healthy versus unhealthy. Dysfunction versus function. A moment of silence. Yeah, cuz you just you just looking into my eyes like I have you did. mesmerized or something. You like my words or what? No, I'm just trying to think of the next shit I'm about to say. Oh, okay. Got you know it. What I'm saying? That's all. No, but yeah, you, you got to look at it from, you know, that perspective because we can't give information one-sided. Yeah, th- that would be logical to a healthy a person with a healthy mindset, but someone that doesn't think on that vibration or that level, they're not going to see like, oh, I shouldn't ask. They just thinking, hey, I want to have fun, fun and I yeah. want you to come have you fun with me up, too. Yeah, they're not looking turn at up. it yeah. as a as a negative thing. They're just like, hey, let's get out and go have some fun, which is th- that's why I go back to us what you subscribe to as an individual. Can't nobody put me in a situation that I'm not agreeing to. Unless you tell me we going somewhere and you lie and we end up at some but then that's a whole other story cuz then, you know, I can't trust you and I'm not going to get in the car with you anymore because you lied to me. But it goes back to the individual. You got a point. You got a point. So let's get back to access, man. Um, no, this is access. I mean, yeah, it was access, but let's go to a different lane of access because a lot of people out here probably ain't married. They single and still trying to find Mr. Right or Mrs. Or Mr. Right. Or Mr. Wrong or uh, Mrs. Wrong. You know what I'm saying? Or Mr. Right now. Who knows? But um, even with that, giving, let's talk about people giving access to them sexually without any commitment. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, let's, let's, because as a man point of view, I feel like once a lady give it up, you ain't have no value. As that's how I see it. You gave him all access. He done roamed around the whole empire and got everything and stashed the goodies and left. That what does. do you got to negotiate with now? And that's how I, I feel. So as a woman point of view, what do you think as people giving access too fast to their bodies. But you already know what I think, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. Then the people I'm go don't back. know. I know. People don't know what you think. We got people huh. from That's Iran true. and stuff like that listening. Yeah, I wish. But, but but what you're saying is true, you know, to God, from your mouth to God's ears. But this is my thing, and I probably use this example a lot, but it makes sense to me. A person will not give a, a another person the keys to their car. Oh, no, nah, you ain't driving my car. Right. Because their car is valuable. Right. And they feel like if something happens to their car, they're without a car. But yet you will give somebody access to your body without a commitment or with anything in return. The reason why I said I'm going to play devil's advocate, because most people, you know, we're in this. It's my body. I could do what I want to do type world right now. Right. But at the same time, it's like. What are you giving up when you give someone access? You know, what what are you losing? And, hey, if you don't feel like you're losing anything at all, that just tells me what you think your value is, right? Because I say this. But hold on before you get to say that. Because a lot of women probably think their stuff is the bomb and it's going to trap them. So some of them probably think it's valuable. Okay. So if everybody's stuff was that bomb, where's the wedding rings? Where's the commitment? Where Where's... Where's it at? So you can't, I think that's an illusion and that's a way to pump yourself up and make yourself feel good. But you're trying to make Ooh, me the bad guy. Coin. And I'm not even trying to go in there because you already know how I think I'm about like, these topics and you're trying to basically pull Close it your out legs me. if you want a husband. Nah, look. Quit trying to make me out to be because I, I, I see where you're trying to trap me in this conversation. I'm trying to trap you in the conversation. Yeah, you, you're, trying to like, trap, you're trying to trap me in the conversation. But this is the thing, seriously, like even with your body, like, right, your body should be something sacred. Everybody shouldn't have access to your body, just like everybody shouldn't have access to your car. 
everybody shouldn't have access to your, your home. house. Yes. Yeah. I don't just bring anybody in my house. I, look from the, I had my first place at 16. Everybody knows do not show up with somebody to my house. If I don't talk to you on a personal level, you shouldn't even know where I live at city street. You should never know anything about me because I haven't given you access to me like that. Right. So it's like, we won't give people access to all these things, but we'll give them access to our body. But what does that say? That's your worth. What is your value? But playing devil's advocate, we live in a world now where people don't really value their bodies in the same regard. Cause they're going to tell you it's my body. I'm not basically allowing the man to have access. He's allowing me access to him. So the, you, it's a whole new it goes way. Both ways now. Yeah, 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 it's a whole new way of thinking because you'll have people argue both sides of the fence. So it's like a conversation. I really, this is me. If you don't want it, I don't give it. And so, because you can have this conversation with people and they're going to have a debate. And so for me, I know my values. I know what I teach. I preach. I know what I feel about that situation. But if you're not coming to ask me, I'm not giving it. Why? Because you're going to always have the argument that, no, the man is giving access to them. They're give- So it's, it's not even the same thought process in terms of body and value anymore. But even for the man sleeping around with everybody, you're giving them access to it. And even if you're you a man with wealth. You giving them access to trap you, you know what I'm saying? And so it's not even about it's not up. it's not even always about trapping though. It's like when okay, if I give you my time, right? If I give you my time, let's just say time hypothetically. If I'm saying yes to something and someone told me this years ago and it made a lot of sense, for every yes there's a no. Because if I'm saying a yes to a certain commitment, there has to be a no to something. And let me break it down to what I'm saying. If you tell me Ride with me to the store. Simple. That's a yes. But then I'm saying no for something I can be doing at home. Right. If you say come to this concert with me. Yes. Right. Few hours, five hour, four hour concert. I'm saying no to something else for four to five hours. Right. And so when you're making commitments or agreeing to something, you're always giving. It's an exchange. And I think people really need to look at it is when you're saying yes and giving something, what are you giving up? Yeah, you lost me on that. <laughs> like, totally <laughs> lost me. Like, like, if I say yes, <sighs> if I say yes, I'm going to the store. I ain't worried about what's nothing. This is what I'm doing. This is like, then you're getting stuck. Like, oh, my God, I can't do that because I don't know what I'm missing out on. I know it, it was it was it, it was too high over your head. So, Very, so, yeah. so, so, so let me let me slow it down and break it down. So, because you, you 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 went to the store, now I can understand like if you giving this person time that you know that it's not marriage material, you missing out on something like that. I can see you going there, but me going to a concert and missing out on who knows what. No, but listen, but listen, you putting your listen, time in a relationship you, that you know that relationship ain't going listen, nowhere. You, you missing out on you, the, somebody you're analyzing that, that too much. You're, you're analyzing way too much. It's simple. To every yes, there is a no. And, and I think you're looking at it from a different perspective. What I'm saying is, even if I go to the store, and you're like, oh, yeah, I want to go to the store. I'm not doing anything anyways. I'm still saying no to my time sitting on the couch watching TV. There's still a no. Yeah, you, you totally, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you're going to have to write a book on that one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to have to break that all down. Because I don't see nobody saying um, I said yes to this, and um, I'm saying no to something else. Like, nigga, who gives a fuck about what's going on? I'm saying yes to this, and we doing this. Ain't nobody thinking about um, what I'm missing oh out and saying no. Oh my goodness! So yeah, you gonna no? You gonna, what I'm saying is, there's an exchange for everything, but I guess I might just have to write it out because yeah, you saying yes is not an exchange of what you saying no because at the end of the day, I'm saying no to that anyways. But so I'm but, not missing because it's no, I don't want to sit on the couch. Yes, I want to go out. So at the end of the day, you're not what, missing but, out but, on the no. But, but what if I, I do want to sit on my Then you would say yes to sitting on the couch no. and no from going out. That's what I'm saying. So what do you mean? If you want to sit on the couch, you, you're you a grown person. You could sit on the couch. But you're missing a point. It's you don't have t- to say that now when you're saying you forced time. to go to the store because I don't like now you're a kid. Your mama making you go to the store and you wanted to sit on the couch. Now I can understand that statement like. My mom made me go to the store, but it's, I miss my about, cartoons. It's about time. It's about 
Because listen, but listen. you control what okay. you do for your time. Let, let me come down and let me let me I love. Yeah, you trying to go away? I I love Gandhi it. level and shit like. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no shit like. This motherfucker trying to get all deep. <laughs> like, I level. Like I level. I level. I level. Okay, stay with me. If I give you a hundred dollars, right? You can give me that hundred dollars back. But if I give you my time. You can't give me my time back. Coin. That's all he had to say right <laughs> no. there. God damn. You can't get time back. So invest, watch what you do with your time because that time is lost. It's at forever. invested, right? So when you're giving this person your time, your body, when you're giving them access, you are losing something. It's an exchange. You lose your time. You? <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's what you know what I'm saying? You make it so <laughs> when you invest in somebody and okay, give them your time. Okay, forget it. Forget it. You lose your time. Because That's the no, only thing you losing. Okay, you not it. you not missing the soaps. At, you know, forget you know it. I don't you watch just the soaps. Forget it. Forget, it. forget yeah, it. Forget it. We're going to switch that because, up because no, Gandhi are... over here <laughs> want to go super deep on y'all and she need to write a book on that and break it down because I'm lost. Okay. So let's go back to access. So you say you don't allow access to people to your house. Why? Why is so critical on dictating on that's who, a spiritual perspective? Who to come to your house and who you who should know where you live and all that type of stuff? What what type of access of that? safety and spiritual? And I've always thought like this. You know, I'm a, I'm a safety fanatic, right? So in terms of safety, I'm cool with you, but I'm not cool with the person that you're bringing to my house. You're loyal to me, right? The person that you bring into my house yeah. is not. So if I'm robbed or anything happens, come, I feel like this. First of all, don't bring anybody to my house. But if you do and something comes up minis- missing, anything it's on you. Because you shouldn't have never brought them to my house. That's like you vouch for that person. Yeah, I don't like vouch that for that mafia people. stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. Off with your head because you vouch for them. I don't vouch for people. And, that, and that's the reason why. Because I know your loyalty to me, right? Just because you look at a person like that doesn't mean you're going to look at the person next to him like that. So just because you're loyal to this person doesn't mean that loyalty goes the same. I'm like that, but yeah, other c- everybody's everybody not. Everybody a good right. judgment of character. And so you, exactly. They may think this person, and I've had situations where a situation with a family member, and we fell out over this because they went back and told this person some stuff be, because of their relationship with them about my business and I kept explaining to them that's who you close to I'm not close to that person like that and so people don't understand because you have a sense of relationship with somebody doesn't mean it's going to go hand in hand with the person next to you and that doesn't mean this person won't rob me that doesn't mean this person won't tell somebody where I live so in that sense no I don't give access everybody access to my house because my house is a safe haven this is my peace this is where I feel safe at you know, and when somebody comes in that I don't know, that's a violation. Now I don't know who you told where I live. Yes. It, so it's like it's a safety situation. And then from a spiritual perspective, with access to your house, what spirits are you bringing with you? And, and people are probably like, oh, she crazy. But trust me, from a spiritual perspective, you don't bring everybody to your house. Your house is a safe haven. I expect that the world to be chaotic when I walk around, out them two doors. I don't expect when I'm at home for my house to be chaotic. It's supposed to be peaceful. When I go into the world, I expect that. I'm in the world. But when I'm at home, it's supposed to be peaceful. So, therefore, I protect and pay attention who I bring in inviting to my home. Ooh, coins. Oh, now I'll get the coins. But before I was Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, before, uh, yeah. Because a lot of people could agree with that. And a lot of people might not agree with that. Wait, 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 wait. I'm glad you said that because guess what? I don't care if they agree or not. This is this is the beauty of basically of Well, I'm saying not no. agree, relate to that. No. Agree, listen, 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 they, they listen, listen, listen. I'm never gonna change my perspective based on who agrees or who can relate. Because guess what? I can relate to it. So at the end of the day, you already know me. It don't matter what you okay. think about what Calm I'm saying. Down, buddy. Yeah, let's Calm just down. put that in perspective. Break like down. most people can't relate or agree. I don't care if you do Bring or you can't. You just didn't let me finish my point. God damn. Slow uh, down. Oh, okay. Because I was about to say, some people find peace of having an open house and having people come in and out their house and having people around them. That's what I'm saying. Like if, wait. some people, you know what I'm saying? Some, you feel like security, but some people got to have 
a house full of people to feel. You know, I don't even know how to feel because I ain't. Hold on, hold on. Feel From a, a psychological way. perspective, I'm going to say again. So if you are a person that always have to f- have people around you, something is wrong internally. If you always got to have people around you to feel fulfilled, you're empty inside. And you're looking and, and using people as a way to, to fulfill you. That's a problem. People, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. I didn't say it. She did. That's a problem. If you if you telling me you got to have people around you all the time, that's a problem. Because some people are just people lovers. I mean, just like okay, people. we're talking about two different things. Let's put it in perspective. Let's put it in context. So if you're saying like some people are like the the glue of the family and they always have family members over and all that different type of stuff. But even being in being that type of person, you still have to use wisdom and discernment of who you're bringing into. This is your home. This ain't like the, we meeting up at the park. This is your house. Said meet it up yeah. So park. you still got a basic, it's not a public <laughs> setting. It's a trap you, house. You, you, you still got to be mindful of who you're bringing into your home, whether if you're the glue or you're the person to take people in you, because let's say, for example, I could be the person that love to take everybody in, but you don't think I have to use wisdom on who I let come in because that one person that come in could be the person that killed me, robbed me, raped me. So it doesn't matter if you are that type of person. You still have to use wisdom and discernment with who you bring into your home. It still goes back to spiritual and safety. Control your access, people. Control the access. You have to. You can't allow everyone to have access to you let's talk about business access i was just about to say that. oh my goodness because from a business perspective when people oh i just want to link up and it it, it, i say time thieves because you wasting my time oh yeah i got that a lot man everybody want to connect don't talk about shit want to do it i don't need to pull up say what you want to say on the email dm whatever don't waste my time right and people don't understand that they think you being rude but but you're you're trying to get access of my time and you don't want nothing. Well, for me, they just want a picture. Boy, bye. <laughs> bye. Oh, man. I'm telling you, man, it is serious because I had somebody really pissed off at me because I wouldn't hang out with them. And then that was I, I was like, this is crazy. Like, you mad because I don't want to kick it. I don't get down like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm the type, I don't need no friends. I don't want to go hang out and kick it. I enjoy kicking it with my family, bottom line. Back to business. You made That was part of business. No, because they didn't want to hang out with you for business. They wanted to hang out with you for business. But they try to make it intertwine with business. They try to manipulate like it was business. So that, did you just say business? So that was business. Okay. Thank you. Mm. So... Please don't do that again. That was so corny. <laughs> DJ, stop that shit. No, Demetrius, <laughs> stop that. Um, just from a perspective of business, in terms of access, I think when you're meeting someone in business, like I never go talk to somebody if I'm trying to discuss business and don't already know what I want to talk to them about. And that's how you kind of know somebody's just playing games and just because if if I give you we call it the 60 minute, the 60 second elevator speech. Right. It's like you should be able to tell me what you want before in just 60 seconds. And if you can't, it already tells me you wasted my time and people get offended by that. But it's like I don't have time to sit here and give you access to me for you to just. Oh, let's go to lunch. We don't need to go to lunch for you to say what you need to say. What about breakfast? The nigga call you want to go to breakfast. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Now, this is ultimate business. The nigga going to call my wife early in the morning talking about, let me take you out to breakfast. Like, why are we ringing up? And I was so grown. You know what I'm saying? I grown up. I didn't react and shit. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I was caught off guard by that. I felt disrespected by that because for me, just, you know, on a side note for me, seriously, all jokes aside. If a man is approaching me in a way that you know I'm married and you feel like you can step to me that way, I feel disrespected, like, in a sense of what what type of female do you think I am that you can even come at me like that? So to me, that was disrespectful within itself because I've never given you that energy or that impression to even think that was okay. So... But we didn't. We didn't even have to bring that up, though. We was talking about boundaries in business. That came all in business. I don't remember saying boundaries, but okay. 
I did. <laughs> okay. But finish on what you were saying, or you forgot. You cut me off. You what? always how you forget when somebody cuts you off. Because my mind. So you were saying basically that the boundaries in business of don't waste your time trying to meet up. Yeah, that that was pretty much it. And like that's it, why I, that's why I brought the dude up trying to meet up for but breakfast. We, but we didn't have to get so personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you mean? We didn't, we didn't have to get so personal. But when you meet someone again, you should already know what you're saying. Don't 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 come to me. And you know what is crazy? Because well, it's a double edged sword. And the reason why I say that is because I'm so direct and straight to the point. People think I'm rude, but it's like I don't have time to waste. Like, I'm not going to fluff you up and say all this buttery stuff. I'm telling you exactly what I want and I'm contacting you for. But for me, it, 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 it's kind of a bad thing because people think it's rude. Oh, again, oh, yeah, I get, like, that fluffy, hey, good morning, no, no, how no, you no, doing? No, 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 like, no, nah, no, Because, you, you know, got I'm straight email? to the point. Because yeah. I'm straight to the point. So people can see it as, like, well, dang. But to me, it's just like I'm not going to waste your time. It's either yes or no, maybe or whatever, but. Let's just get to what we're talking about. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's get to the meat and to the potatoes. So access. Mm, we talked about access to your house, your car, your body, your mind. Did we get on your mind of getting people access to your mind? That's part no. of the. Oh, that's a good you know one. That's a good one. And, and I think giving people access to your mind is giving people access to your knowledge. I don't think everybody deserves or should have access to your knowledge. And what I mean by that is like you could be pouring in. For me, you pouring into somebody and this has happened to me. And it's like you're not even using the knowledge that I'm giving you. And you keep coming back asking for the same. This is what trips me out too. Like people call me about relationship issues or just stuff that they're going through. And then I have a like a speaking engagement. Do you remember this? And I'm thinking everything you asking me, I'm talking about in my speaking speaking engagement. But you don't want to go there, but you want to wait. And that goes back, you know, I'm big on my time. You want access to my knowledge and access to my time, but you won't sit in the conference and listen to what I'm saying, every question that you're asking. So, no, I don't think you should give people access to your mind either. Yeah, I don't give people access. If they ask me, you don't I, I, give I people give them, access at all. I give them little twinkles. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what they're going to do. I didn't even think of who you give access. Like I, I literally. People no people. Ask, if they, if nah. I see they ask me for information, I'm going to give them some information. But you're like, I don't think people really know your personality. They don't. They don't ask me for shit. That's in this. No, know, that's but you're for. like you'll give information all day long for free. I'll give you that. But you're not giving anybody even wiggle room to have access. Like access to what? Just you in general. Um. Yeah. Because I, I feel like I've been burned so many times. So it's 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 like it's trust issues with people. So you have so trust I have trust issues. issues, and you know what I'm saying. And people can't be trusted, and it's that's the way how how I move. I don't trust nobody. I think you should be conscious of, you know, who you trust and who you don't trust, but I don't think everybody's a threat. If you, if you didn't, that's how they get you. Cause that's how I got hit oh, several times. No, you got hit cause you didn't listen to more. Right, but it's still the same thing. Like it's, um, so me giving people access is, is very rare. And, but if you do get access and cross it and it's going to be an issue. And that's why I keep my access very limited. As you should. I think sometimes you're too limited, and that's why sometimes I tell you, like, nah, babe, this dude is a good guy. Like, I'm very good at reading people. That's good. <laughs> oh, you don't you don't want to give me my props because we're on the I'm, podcast. I'm, you're I'm like, babe, you read people There's very well. You're going to give your You coin. read people very yeah, well. Yeah, you do read people, oh, okay. but I'm not, you know what I'm saying? I still access, I don't, I don't and then it's draining. I don't know. It's draining when people you give people access and they just. No, I think I it's draining know. when you give the wrong people access, because when you give the right people uh, from when I talk to my friends and my squad, like I leave inspired. Like I feel like I just had a whole gallon of water. Like I'm refreshed, like I'm rejuvenated. So I don't think people is when you have pullers time thieves and people to take from you is when you feel drained. Cause when I am, in the company of certain people and give them access, I leave like I'm thinking about the next thing I'm about to work on. Yeah, shout out to Dante, man, because he be having me like that on the, you know, same motivational conversations we be having. Okay, sh- should I shout out all my crew? No, <laughs> we gon' we gon'. 
switch that up. Oh, okay. Keep your crew behind scenes. Oh, okay. But you know what I'm saying? Because I, I got limited people. Like you said, I got limited access. So, you know, you get quiet. You hating? Not at all. Not at all. I'm just, my, my mind is processing. You know, my mind goes, you know, in a hundred different ways. And I'm trying to gather my thoughts. Oh, okay. So, um, that was more of access to the mind, knowledge, the information. I mean, you can't force feed people in information, and I wouldn't give people information because you just be talking, wasting your time. So I wouldn't be giving people access to that information unless they ask. And I'll give them a little okay. bit and see what they do with it because you don't want to give them the whole spiel and they don't move. That becomes draining because then you'll be the next person to ask for. You'll be like, man, I ain't telling the way shit because – and I tell them they ain't moving. And then sometimes I just don't think it's good to give people access to your to your mind or to your knowledge because not that it's anything wrong with it, but okay, for example, I'm big on this. So when my kids were little, we always had a routine. So they would come home, eat a snack, go straight to the table and do their homework to the point that <clears throat> it was so structured. I didn't even have to tell them to do their homework. But they knew my number one rule was don't ask me for help with your homework until you've done everything that you know how to do. So I was teaching them problem solving skills and critical thinking skills. I wasn't giving them access to my knowledge because I wanted to see how they were going to use theirs. And sometimes even giving to someone too much access to your knowledge is enabling them because they will never tap Try. into their own knowledge. True. True. Can I get a coin? Um, I'm kind of out of, ran out of change right now. <laughs> 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 you can't be on here asking for coins now. Okay. Coins is earned, not okay. asked for. I, I you know what I'm saying? Was earned, but okay. Yeah, you go on here asking for coins and stuff. That means let me let me be, let me be control no. in control of the coins. Look, don't be asking for coins. <laughs> oh, wee, that nigga just gave me a coin. But um, wow. let's get on access to money. You know what I'm saying? If people mm. feel like they got access to your money, it, it is it's crazy because you put in all this hard work. And people sit on their ass and don't do shit, but they feel like you got it. You should be able to provide for me. You know what I'm saying? People really believe people really believe they got access to your money. People Why? around me don't think they got access to my money. Well, I'm just saying people in general feel like they got access to other people's money, family members and all that. You know what I'm saying? You get one person, they go big, blow up, hit the lotto or something. Everybody in the world works feel like basically you owe them something. That means they feel like they got access to your money. Okay. I think it's up to the individual to set boundaries. You don't have to. I mean, okay. Oh, she tongue tie on this topic. <laughs> no, like she, I, I she, ain't she's trying to tiptoe around I this one right here. Like yeah, hot rocks, tiptoe, hot rocks. I'm not trying to tiptoe around it. What I'm saying is, you said. Everybody thinks, keyword thinks, that they have access to your money. You can think whatever you want to think, but it's up to the individual to allow that thought to be true or false. So, yeah, you could think you have access to my money, but there's no point to think you're going to have access to my money because the reality of it is you don't, right? Because people are going to think things all the time, but what are you going to do to basically make that thought of a fact or a fiction? For me, it's definitely going to be fiction because based on my actions, I'm going to show you you don't have access to my money. You get a coin on that. Oh, I get a coin. You get a coin on it. Oh, I okay. see how you were struggling to get that point out. I was struggling. Other, I would give you other coin. No, on that I one. just I'm, it I'm was processing. My bad. I wasn't processing. I was just glued in on the 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 think. Yeah, you could think that you have access, but what am I showing you? Because people are gonna think whatever they want to think all day long. People think they got access to my house. People think they got access to me. Somebody sitting on social media right now basically lusting over the person they watch and think they got access to them. But do they? You can think whatever you want to think. It's up to the person to show you that you don't. Okay. Okay. Gandhi. Okay. Whatever. But um, so even like, um, cause I've seen a lot of cultures and stuff like that of their parents, parents feel like they, they obligated to be blessed when their children get blessed. I know in the Asian community, they take care of their elders and stuff like that. I would take care of my parents. You know what I'm saying? So, like, but is you obligated to take care? That's the that's the. the I don't key feel like thing. I'm obligated, right? I don't feel like I'm obligated, 
But my thing is this. I believe in being blessed to be a blessing. There's a difference between. No, 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 no. Let me finish. I already know you. Let me finish. I believe in taking care of a sense. I'm going to make sure you straight. It's a difference between making sure you'll never be homeless and just allowing and enabling your behavior to make you feel like you don't have to do anything. It's two different things. Because I feel like if you stop applying yourself, what are you here for? You should always be growing and evolving and apply. I don't care how old you are. If you 99 years old, you got a brain, use it. You should always be applying yourself. And that could be in many aspects, right? And so I'm always going to make sure you'll never be homeless. But if I'm not going to give you $1,000 and tomorrow you're talking about where's another 1000 at. I wouldn't even do that for my kids. So I definitely wouldn't do that for another grown person. Yeah, I don't believe if you're not putting it into work, don't expect me to help you. Bottom line. That's how I think. I don't care who you is. Who great, you are. great grandpa, grandma, mom, dad, uncle, brother. If you ain't putting off the work, if you ain't getting off your ass and attempting to try to do something, don't come for me for help. That's how I feel. And that's control of access to me. You're not going to get that access unless you put in work. No, if it's and the my thing parents, is, you I out there, if it. I see you out there doing it, and that's the thing about me, I see somebody out there trying and trying to get, I, I don't have no problem helping them. But if you out there just smoking weed, hanging out and doing nothing, oh, no. don't, nah, I'm not about but, to, you know okay, what I'm saying? You're not my why, kid. Okay, I can't write you on my is, income tax like the, shit. The <laughs> reason why I say it's different because like, let's say, for example, let's say granddad, right? Grandma Sandra. They've done a lot for me throughout my childhood. He's like, what, 80 something years old. So at this point, I wouldn't expect you to go be working a job. But if I'm making sure you're straight, I'm going to make sure you're straight, right? You're already at a level in life where I don't expect you to be going to do a nine to five. I'm going to make sure you're straight now. But I think that's a lifetime of investment. What do you mean? Of you building a relationship with that person. Well, of, well you it's, know what it's, I'm it's reciprocated. So you've invested. Okay. And I think that is it's the ties to the person, too. Because it's like you've invested in me throughout my life. You know what I mean? Throughout my life. And so it's nothing for me to return the investment and to invest back in you. And I think that's the difference. I think many times people want to be invested in and they haven't invested. Exactly. Now, do you think that this, the city could invest in you? Because the I city? hear a lot of people feel like once you get famous and get married, you got to go back to your old neighborhood and pour into. What are you? What's your thoughts on that type of access? Like, cause me, my point, my city ain't put into me and, and helped me grow at all. So I don't feel like but I'm it obligated. Did, but it did, how? but it did though. But okay. But we are, we talking about the city or are we talking about, well, I'm people? talking about the city I'm period say, as the, like did. the city. It I mean, did. do you the owe the programs, city the city no. have programs, investing their kids no. in the community and stuff. Now no. if they did that, they like, okay. They didn't. But what I, what I'm saying is the city invested in you. Not like the mayor itself or the programs, but the environment. And the reason why I say the environment invested in you, it invested in me. It invested in every person that lives in the city. And the reason why I'm going to stand on that is because those experiences in that city is what made you and made you and built you to be the man you are today. Now, am I obligated to go to a city to do? No, I'm not. But I will never take away from the city where I've come from, good or bad, because all those experiences molded me and helped build me to the woman I am today. Right. Right. No, I don't, I don't agree right. with that. So no. you don't think your experiences. My, those city, is my experiences. But I, when I say the city invests in you, I mean, when the city have programs for the youth, that's been the city is, is doing outreach for the youth. Then, then that's how they invest in their the kids in the city. Then, let's then I feel like, OK, let, on, let me so pour that, back because on. the boys club poured into me. But listen, the YMC poured into me. The You know what I'm saying? Listen, yes. But listen, but listen, th- this is, and you know, I always my mind just thinks I always see all sides of the fence in different perspectives. You could deposit, invest negative or positive, good or bad. And so even though they didn't have programs and even though it was an inner city and it was bad, it still was an investment. But it's not about what's invested, it's what you learn from that investment. So I'm not saying that you're obligated to go back to that city. For me to say the cities I lived in didn't invest, good or bad, because I've seen good and bad, most of the time bad. 
it still was an investment, but I learned from that investment because you can have a person. Let's look at it from a from a realtor, a, a real estate perspective. You can have an investment. That investment can be a good investment or a bad investment. That house can be good or bad, but it's still an investment. It's not about the investment. It's what you learn from the investment. So did the city invest? Yes, it did. What did you get from it? But are you obligated to then turn around and have somebody tell you you owe a city? No. How do I owe a city? Right. I don't have to give a city anything. You do it out the kindness of your heart, not because you feel obligated because ain't nobody ever going to tell me what I have to do with my time, my money, my energy or anything. We went and spoke at Harrison Elementary today. We did an assembly. Right. And it's multiple assemblies to come in the city. But I, I'm doing it because I want to give something that I felt like that wasn't given to me, right? And so do I feel obligated? No. But do I have a passion to do it? Yes. Mm, coin. You oh. got the passion to do it. That's the key to word right there. That's the coin because I have the passion, passion to do it. Passion to do it. Because a lot of people don't do shit out of their passion. They're doing it out for the bag. You know what I'm saying? So... When you have a passion, I think the passion comes with a different, more, a different type of responsibility than somebody out there just getting the bag because the person with passion really cares. But, but this, but you have to care about what you do. But, but you know, I'm, I feel like God is my, my existence. My purpose in life is to provoke thought, to change the minds and the behavior. If I don't get you to think, and sometimes I just be saying stuff to just to get a person to think, whether I think it or not, just to make them think about what they're saying and think about their actions. Because if I can't make you think, I can't get you to change. And so for me, I'm like a kid in a candy store. I do that all day long for free. Like a fat kid with cake, huh? It's like a fat kid with cake. Greedy. No, but I that I love to see when a light bulb goes off in somebody's head or there, you could just look on their, their face when like the thought and, and I got them thinking and they, that's like, Oh my goodness. It's like the greatest feeling to have someone really think like that, that on um, what they call it, that, um, that wow moment. Like, yeah, that, that that's gratification. Even if I can get you to think about what you're doing or think about what you're saying, I've done my job because it disrupts the pattern of thinking. Whether you go back to that thought process, that thought process or not, I still made you think about what you were doing. Planted a seed. Absolutely. Planted a seed. So, y'all, we're going to wrap this episode up of access, giving people access to all types of a part of you from your mind, body, soul, house. Security, your dogs, your animals, whatever. Stop giving people access. And um, you can follow us on social media. I am Grindface. You can find her at Sania Mayo. Everything, but let me spell it. Oh, she got to spell it because some of y'all don't know how to spell. <laughs> That's what she's saying. No, I'm saying my name is complicated. S A N I Y Y A H M A. Y-O on all social media platforms. <coughs> Follow her if you want some positive, daily positive messages. Or Not whatever. daily because I don't post daily. Yeah, probably um, six messages a year or something like no. that. <laughs> Let me but tell we you gonna something tune about me. We, um, we, she going to share that thought on the next episode, y'all. So um, <laughs> you just going to cut me off? We got to go. We got to go. Bye.